This video is going to show you how to run a one sample t-test in SPSS and it's also going to show you how you can write it up in an APA format and I'll also show you how you can produce an effect size namely Cohen's D for this effect. I'm going to run through two examples as well to show so you some subtle differences and things that you need to do when you're setting up one sample t-tests. Data we're looking at is a sample of 60 female German students who completed two measures of anxiety. The first one is a sort of objective measure in which we measured their attention towards threatening stimuli. This was done using a visual probe or dot probe task. I'm not going to go into any real detail on this, but you can look up online information about dot probe tasks. And basically what these figures refer to is the amount of time the individual's gaze was focused on threatening stimuli compared to neutral stimuli. This score refers to how long they looked at threatening stimuli minus how long they looked at non-threatening stimuli. So if you get a positive score, that means your attention is grabbed and held by threatening stimuli. If you've got a negative score, that means you're more avoidant of negative stimuli and you're looking towards the neutral stimuli instead. So for example, individual number one in this data set is, would be more focused on the neutral stimuli than they would be on threatening stimuli, whereas this individual is looking at threatening stimuli more than they are looking at the neutral stimuli. If someone shows absolutely zero bias whatsoever, that means they look at both image three types equally. The other variable here is simply scores on the anxiety subscale of the hospital anxiety and depression scale. So what we're interested in is whether individuals in this case are showing a significant attentional bias towards or indeed away from threatening stimuli. And in this case, what we're going to look at is whether they have anxiety scores that are greater than or less than the population norm for female Germans. So to run a one sample t-test is a relatively straightforward procedure. You get to analyze, compare means, and then one sample t-test. And this is your one sample t-test window. We're going to look at each one separately. We're not going to put multiple variables into this, and you'll see why when I do the next example. So what we're going to look at first is attention to threat. Now, what we're interested in is whether our sample do show a significant attentional bias towards, or indeed away from, threatening stimuli. So our test value, the comparison we make is zero, because we're interested in whether this, these attention scores are significantly different from zero, zero being absolutely no bias, whether it's away from threatening stimuli or towards threatening stimuli at all. There's absolutely no influence of the stimuli type whatsoever. And that's all we really need to do. We just click on OK. This gives us our one sample t-test output. What this is, this basically shows you the number of participants. We know we've got 60. The mean tensile bias score, the standard deviation of the score, the standard error. And then this is our t-statistic, our degrees of freedom, and our p-value. As you can see, attention towards threat is statistically significantly different from zero. So there is a significant attentional bias in the sample. You can see as well, based on this, that this attentional bias is greater than zero. So generally speaking, the sample, there is an attentional bias towards threatening stimuli. You can see it's also got this mean difference here. Well, the mean difference, if you've got a test value of zero, is always going to be the same in the mean because that's the difference between the mean and the test value. So this is always going to be the same. It also gives you the confidence intervals for this mean difference as well. And you'd simply you'd write this up just like this. Within a sample of gym female students, there was a significant attentional bias towards threatening stimuli, and then you just report your statistics. Of course, as I said before. We can also give an effect size for this. The SPSS won't just compute you an effect size, unfortunately, it won't give you a Combs D. So in order to calculate the effect size, there's actually 
some simple calculations that we can actually do just from this output. Um, and there's, actually, there's even two ways you can generate it. Both of them are relatively straightforward calculations. I would argue the first one I'll show you is a little bit easier than the other, but there's not a lot between the two. All we need to do to calculate a Cohen's D for this is take the mean difference, so 32.34, and then divide that by the sample standard deviation, 93.11. So if you just run that calculation, it will give you a Cohen's D of reported to two decimal places, 0.35. So we can say this is a small to medium effect size. The other method that you can use instead is to divide the T statistic by the square root of the sample size. So the calculation for this is 2.69 divided by 7.75. And this will give you as well, a Cohen's D of 0.35. So again, both those methods allow you to compute a Cohen's D for this effect. On the second part of the video, we're going to do another one sample t-test, but this time we're going to look at this anxiety subscale of the heart to the hospital anxiety and depression scale. So to run it, we do exactly the same command as before, comparing these one sample t-test. And now we're interested in heart anxiety. However, our test value in this case isn't zero. In our first example, we wanted to see if attention towards threat was different from zero, whether it was greater or whether it was less than zero. But for the um, anxiety subscale, what we're interested in here is, does our sample differ from what we'd expect to see in the population of German females? We need to know what we expect the mean value to be. Fortunately, there's um, lots of experiments that do these type of population means, and here's one here, the hospital anxiety and depression scale and the German population. Um, and as you can see, so the mean scores for anxiety in females is a score of five. What we want to do is, we want to see if our sample has significantly higher or indeed significantly lower scores than five and then we can say this sample is different to what we'd expect to see in a similar population. So we change that, so we've just got a different thing we're comparing these scores to. We click on OK and it gives us our output here. So again we've just got the number of participants, so this is the mean score 4.55, standard deviation 2.01 and the standard error is 0.26 um, and then we actually look at our one sample t-test itself and if we just look straight at the probability our p-value here we can see it's non-significant so there's no significant difference between our sample scores and what we'd expect to see in this population now you can see the sample mean is 4.55 so it's lower than our test value and you can see here the mean difference is the difference between the mean of our sample and the test value and that difference is minus 0.45 so it's only a very small difference between the two and there's the confidence intervals as well for the mean difference as well so again we'd write this up there's no statistically significant difference in scores on the Hans anxiety subscale in the sample compared to what we'd expect from this population and we'd report our t statistic its degrees of freedom and p-value as well. Again, you can also compute Cohen's D for this. So, first of all, we could do our calculation where we divide the mean difference of minus 0.45 by our standard deviation of the sample, 2.01, and this gives us a Cohen's D of minus 0.22. Alternatively, we could do our other calculation in which we divide our T statistic of minus 1.73 by the square root of our sample size so the square root of 60 7.75 and again this will give us a Cohen's D of minus 0.22 um, and we just report this accordingly and this minus 0.22 is indicative of small 
a fact size. When it comes to minuses and fronts of cones D, it's not that important. Actually, it's included. Some people will and some people won't. It's just showing you the magnitude of a difference between two means. It's, so it's not that important whether it's a positive or negative difference because descriptive statistics would actually indicate that. I tend to include it anyway when I'm reporting it. So hopefully this has given you some useful advice over how to run a one sample t-test and particularly you know how you can choose your test value and how to accurately report it.